Uh, thank you. I want to bring you greetings from the people of Kenya. I want to bring you greetings from a little country in East Africa, proudly known as the cradle of mankind, because that is where you have the oldest bones of man. I want to bring you greetings from the country of the great marathoners, a country which holds the gold possession in Boston Marathon for 20 years running since it was started. This is the home of the safari. If you've heard, that's one word Kenya has donated to the world. This is the home of King Lion. Most of you have watched the movie King Lion. You've come across the statement, Hakuna Matata. It means, yeah, no troubles. It's a Kenyan word. It's one part of our heritage. This is the home of the great five. The elephant, the lion, the rhino, the buffalo, and the cheetah the fastest animal on earth. This is the home that was the first African country and indeed a country in the world to start the free, compulsory, free primary education for all. The gateway to East Africa and the largest economy within the East African region. This is the humanitarian capital of Africa and indeed of the sub-region. is the only country outside of New York which has the headquarters of two UN bodies. This is a country of innovators. I don't know whether anybody has heard about M-Pesa. Kenyan young people were the first people to invent mobile money transfer. It has become a world achiever. This is the home of royal things. I know we are going to be having a wedding of Prince William. This is the country where the engagement took place. This is the country where his mother became queen while she was. This is the country of Lake Turkana. Welcome to Kenya. We say in Kiswahili, Karibu. Ah. <laughs> okay, there we are within Africa. Just a few facts about Africa. 53 nations of Africa, making up 16% of the world population. A quarter of the world languages are spoken in Africa. The Nile River, which I think you know most about, is the longest right in the heart of Africa. And Africa is home to the world's largest large animal, the African elephant. And I welcome you to come over to Kenya and see that animal. How, what has globalization done for us in Africa? Because my lecture is going to center more on Africa, and then zero in on Kenya. It has improved living standards for most of our people. More resources and opportunities have come up for Africa, and we have experienced lowering costs of doing business and increased FDI. But it is within this context that we'll be trying to look at how African countries can work on their image and we have reaped benefits in the area of tourism. We have reaped benefits in the area of human resources, volumes of trade, as, as I said. Specifically, we've had two ways to be very specific. Much as there has been a lot of positive things from globalization, we've had the negative side, the dilution of our cultures, Previously, the African culture was that of uh, socialism. We call it the African socialism, where a child belongs to the entire society. Now we've got what we call individualism, what, when you don't know what's happening with your neighbor. The, world, the information gap is widening for us, especially between the rural and the urban Africans, and that is resulting into skilledness in terms of access to resources. Globalization has brought brain trade, but for us it has come up with a lot of brain drain. When Jack was speaking here, I just recalled my last visit to Scotland, which was in October. 200 young Kenyans, all with degrees and doing masters and PhDs, living in Scotland. I think that's a good thing, but for me, I want those guys back home. 
uh, new global rules. And we are saying, are we as African countries prepared to work with those global rules? But this is a good news for anybody who has a business, who has business acumen. The population of Africa going to one billion. And we are saying these people need food, they need clothing, they need pencils, they need books. And what I'm seeing here is business. Any company that wants to expand should start thinking about Africa. And the World Bank has confirmed that Africa is going to be the next frontier of doing business. Africa's growth is widespread across all the sectors, and you can see. But what we are looking at as countries of Africa is to increase the level of business in areas of construction, real estate, tourism, utilities, so that we can match and the countries of Africa can grow much faster. Now, what is the known and documented image of Africa? If somebody uses the word poor, if somebody says the word corruption, if somebody says child soldiers, if somebody says disease and famine, and asks the question where, most people are likely to add that statement with Africa because this is the documented image of Africa. This is the image CNN shows you. These are the images you see predominantly, but there's much more to Africa than what you see in CNN. Within the continent of Africa lies 53 states, 53 different states with enormous resources. Say tourism, talk about forests, talk about minerals, talk about the young, um, energetic, innovative, and highly educated people of Africa. So what we are saying is that that known image of Africa is an incorrect image and we are inviting the entire world to come. The countries I have put there have been the key drivers of the African image, Egypt, Morocco, South Africa, and Tunisia. But there are changes taking place in these countries. And these changes, much as they are negative changes, they are positive in the fact that they're going to shift the balance of attention to Africa, <clears throat> and they're going to shift probably leadership types in Africa. These have been our tourism trends within the world. And if you see this uh, diagram, there are very many countries of, of the world. And you can see in the year, this is from a uh, World Tourism Organization, that most African countries had positive uh, tourism inflows. But what we would like to do through rebranding of most of the nations of Africa is to increase those numbers because there's much more to see in Africa than you know. Now, the future of tourism in Africa requires new tourism products to cater for changing and sophisticated consumer. Previously, our tourism is wildlife-based, cultural-based, but what we have seen in the Middle East, especially Dubai, is that young people are looking for entertainment. They are looking for shopping. They are looking for more technology-driven tourism. And that is the direction that African countries need to go to increase their tourism numbers. Now, the story of Africa is changing. And World Bank statistics and the UNDP statistics show that Africa has promising growth prospects. The global ties within Africa are rising, and we have seen a lot of interest in African nations from China, India, and Brazil. If I could take my country as an example, countries like Turkey have started showing a lot of interest in investing in Kenya and indeed in East Africa. Now, the return of investment in Africa is much higher than any other developing region, and this is a report from McKinsey. Since we are talking investment here, I think it is high time we started to pay a little bit more uh, interest in Africa. The continent's collective GDP, which stood at 1.6 trillion in 2008, now equals to that of Brazil or, or, or Russia. And the McKinsey report says it is rising. And those of you know about Brazil, Brazil is an economy which does not 
owe, the IMF money, the IMF owes Brazil. So those are the countries of the world we are trying to look at. Now, Africa and Kenya is within Africa. We are hoping that in the next few years, we are going to see heightened interest uh, from the BRICS. It's already happening. And the East African country have become, uh, are starting to follow their own growth path based on this. And this is why when you come to Kenya now, when you come to East Africa now, we are having lots and lots of construction carried out by these countries. And because of this trying to chart our new growth path, we need nation branding. We need to rebrand our nation. We need to give people compelling reasons why they need to work for us. And this is how we are approaching it. Uh, when we started branding Kenya and when the government formed the board that I had only two years ago, the question was, what is this whole concept of nation branding? We were used to seeing uh, corporate companies branding themselves. And the way we are approaching it in Kenya is that we believe a brand lives in the hearts and minds of people. So we would like to do programs that touch the hearts and the minds of people. Because from our perspective, a brand is a collective, is the collective perception and attitudes or impressions, if you want, that people will hold towards a place, towards a person, or towards a nation. And these are the perceptions that we would like to change. Impressions about a country are then formed based on the daily realities of that country. So from Kenyan perspective, we are not doing campaigns. We are not doing a lot of advertising because branding is not about advertising. We want to change the daily realities of our people. And when we do that, then the media, the, the world media picks the actions that we are taking to change ourselves and start driving the kind of image people need to have of our country. So we are doing all those activities that are undertaken to provide people with authentic, and we are calling it authentic because when you do branding, it must be believable. If you tell people good things about your country and when they visit, they find this is not true, then your brand is likely to collapse. So authentic, they are distinctive, and they are differentiating identities. And the question we are dealing with, what is about Kenya, what is about Africa, that is so authentic, that is so distinctive, and that is which is so differentiating. And for us, we did a research, and it was a tourist poll, and we asked our tourists, you have been to Kenya, what has been your best experience? And every single tourist said, it's not about your roads, they are not the best, granted. It is about the warmth and the hospitality of the Kenyan people. This is what I am taking home. Roads can be fixed, uh, institutions can be fixed, equipment can be fixed, but the hearts and minds of people cannot be fixed. And therefore, as a people, we want to do things that endear people to, our, which endear the hearts and minds of people. Now, the whole rationale behind country branding is that it, you get the country to get some soft power so that you can attract premium resources. And the question is, what is this soft power that allows you to attract talent, uh, tourists, entrepreneurs? If one country says it has companies, so many countries of the world have companies. If you have restaurants for people to invest, they are all over. You need to give people something beyond the tangibles something beyond the tangible, something that can create trust, that can create um, affection, that can create um, loyalty from people. And this is what we are saying. We need goodwill from the world. And to get that, we need to give it. And from a Kenyan perspective, we believe if we do it well, and if it is true, and we give the world a promise which we can deliver on, then we are going to earn premium resources, we are going to have distinctive advantages coming to us. Now, I've had and we've had a lot of presentations uh, since the conference started, and I've had people use the word branding, but one thing I haven't had is the two key important aspects of branding for us is image and identity. Image 
meaning what you people think about us as Kenyans, and identity, what Kenyans think about themselves. Who do we believe we are, and what are we projecting to the world? And if there's a difference between your identity and your image, then you have problems. Because what you think you are and what you believe you are is not what people think you are. And I think that research is important. And that is where we, we started our branding program as Kenyans. Is, what does the world think about us? And is it true? Is it, does it match what we think about ourselves? And then you take that, you consciously distill it, you interpret it, and you internalize it, and then you project it to the rest of the world and it can be so so many things but the greatest thing for us is our people now what has been our image shapers as a country we have iconic products personalities and culture one of our iconic products is our airline kenya airways the pride of africa i think right now uh, the most uh, well connected african airline and we have our products like m as i said our airport, JKA, has recently been voted the best cargo handling airport in Africa. So when we have those kind of facts, we tell people we think they are believable and we can work with them. Personalities, somebody put there, Nelson Mandela is from South Africa. Paula Radcliffe is another African. Uh, and what we are saying here, Wangari Madai, I think you've come across Wangari Madai, the Nobel laureate. And what we are saying there is, if you have iconic personalities, you can use them as your brand ambassadors. Now, in terms of culture, all of you have heard about the American dream. What is the American dream? And in Kenya, we are saying, do we have a culture that we can take to people? So these are mainly most of the image drivers, and this is what attracts people to you. Now, look at this. Various countries of the world are known for specific things. We, we drive Mercedes in, in my country, and any time you drive a Mercedes, this is a stamp to the iconic German engineering. This is what branding is about. Branding is not so much about advertisement, because when you see that product, then you know these are people who pay attention to quality. So if I want to deal with people, uh, I can deal with a group of people who pay attention to this. Now, when do you brand nations? And is there a need for us to brand our country, Kenya? And I say, when that country has become sick or depressed, when you are sick is that where you want to be is not where you are. So a country that is sick, your infrastructure is in shambles, you are not attracting enough attention, there is unemployment in your country, there is crime, then you need to start thinking about branding or rebranding your country. When your image has got lost in a bigger image, for example, the Kenyan image, a very beautiful country with a good story, has got lost in the documented negative image of Africa. So our, our challenge is how do we rego Kenya out of that image? In the event that you are a European nation and you find your image getting lost in a new European image, then it is time for rebranding or branding your own country. When other forces are positioning you wrongly, in Kenya we have had challenges because of uh, the pirates in the Gulf of Aden. I think you have read about them. Now, the Gulf of Aden is so far from our country. But when these pirates are caught, they come to try them in Kenya because Kenya was one country that agreed they could be tried in our country. So the CNN reporters who are headquarters in, in Nairobi, every time they speak about the pirates, they tell you, speaking to you from Nairobi. When they report about Somalia, it is reporting to you from Nairobi. When they talk about Dafu, they report from Nairobi. When they talk about Congo, they report from Nairobi because Nairobi is the media headquarters of Africa. Now, everybody then think these things are happening in Nairobi. All those countries I've mentioned are very far away from our headquarters, Nairobi. And therefore, our image is being affected by those forces. When awareness about your strength is low, and we have been suffering this because not a lot of information gets out of Africa except that story which sells because the media is looking for bottom line. 
So the, 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 the little good stories, all the good news Africa gets lost. And so there is a need for African countries to start telling their story. When your position is threatened by other countries, maybe you have been the headquarters for investment and you are losing investment, that is happening to Kenya a bit. As other nations of Africa grow, we see port of Mombasa, which is our port, losing a bit of its uh, cargo to other ports. So we need to reclaim that. So the belief here is that our country is like a product and, and it can be isolated. Good attributes about our country can be isolated, packaged, and communicated. But to do this, the branding must go along with political, social, economic initiatives. You cannot just advertise. There must be concrete political, social, economic and, 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 and uh, yeah, social, political, and economic initiative. And that is what our country is doing, implementing reforms in the social area, implementing reforms in the public sector, implementing reforms in the economic sector, so that now the bread has pillars on which it can stand in. I don't need, I think most countries that have done branding know the kind of benefits that you reap if you do it well. But put in a nutshell is that if you do a country branding very well, it is authentic, it is believable. You are able to attract visitors to come visit, you are able to attract investment, and you are able to attract people to come and work. And those are the three indices of measuring a strong country brand, investment, living, and visiting. And those are the three things we are looking at as we work on a branding strategy for our nation, Kenya. Now, I want to go to, uh, let me start with this. Um, I started with a question, is there a compelling case for African countries to brand themselves? And we are saying yes, 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 because worldwide, a very limited perspective of Africa, and we need to widen the perspectives that people have on Africa. And these probably are the images that you get through those good intentions, a lot of aid coming to Africa, a lot of media, and a lot of charity. And we are saying these good intentions are adding up with bad results because they are creating a dependence syndrome. And then the image in Africa becomes a continent that is depending on age. Our president, the president of the Republic of Kenya, as put it in a very small statement, we want more trade, not more aid. And therefore, when, since he became president, we are financing our budget to a tune of 97% with our national resources, only borrowing 3% from World Bank and other aid agencies. And I think that is very important for all the countries of the world so that we can stem that. The belief here is you cannot be uh, going for charity and also have economic development at the same time. You are either a destination for charity and you remain as such, or you are charting your own economic development path, but you can't play both. Because a charity brand only attracts uh, disinterested generosity. An economic brand inspires healthy commercial self-interest, and that is what we would like to have in Africa. I don't want to go into this. I think I've already mentioned that. But what I want to tell you is that put together, the African countries are great brands. You can see I've avoided to zero my topic so much on Kenya because I said the bigger image there is the image of Africa. And I think the African nation, Nigeria, South Africa, Morocco, we need to sit around a table and talk about branding Africa, even as we brand our little nations. So... The nations of Africa are great brands. Look at minerals. Right now we are struggling with look, trying to find where 2.5 tons of gold has disappeared from Congo DRC. 2.5 tons of pure gold. Which other country of the world has that kind? Yeah? The, the African Congo, if you cut all the forest in Congo, you'll have cleared 90% of the, the, the forest cover in the world. That's the kind of wealth resources that Africa has. All the big trees that you want and all the iconic trees, the climate and the landscape, 
um, I sure, you are sure about the African uh, savanna, uh, the great lift over the lakes and the beaches, unmatched anywhere in the world. Art and culture, I think art and culture, Africa has great art. I saw beating the drums here earlier. But what are we getting out of this? The African sounds, the ancient civilizations of Africa, which are documented, the great African writers, yet we are still having the label of the dark continent. How can this be when we have such great brands? The wildlife, uh, the African icons, you have heard about our runners, the Nobel Prize winners, democracy. Africa now is leading the world in democracy. But why does this, why are people fixated about this dark image? The market potential for Africa, I talked about the one billion people and innovative. Our young people are really going IT. And the question is, what do we need to do as African nation? These have been our challenges uh, of branding Africa the population growth rate. And what we are saying is what happens is when the population is growing so fast, we are unable to generate the capital needed to look after this, this population because most governments start to direct their resources to dealing with basic services according to Maslow's hierarchy, biological needs. And you are unable to save up enough capital to put into economic development. And why that is why the heavy borrowing. So this is one challenge we are trying to work on. Urbanization, another challenge. Lots of movement from the rural areas to the cities, to a point where the cities are unable to cope with provision of basic services. Kenya as a country, what we are doing is now moving development into the rural areas by making the other small towns in the country as hubs for trade and commerce so that everybody is not going to the capital. In terms of health, Africa houses just about 11% of, uh, of the global population, but showed us 24% of global disease, disease burden. So this becomes a very difficult situation because you need to direct money to health so that you can take care of people, and now you are unable to save, like I said. So the African government are uh, therefore unable to pay uh, for or support health services. And so a greater part of the population remaining unproductive. And then um, we have brain drain. We have so many Africans going out of Africa to work in other nations. This is a double-edged sword because it's bringing remittances from our diaspora and we're using those remittances to grow our economy. But we also need our doctors, we need our teachers. I want to give an example where the hospitals in Kenya are now experiencing problems with nurses. But we have 4,000 Kenyan trained nurses, trained by the government of Kenya for free, working in the United Kingdom. So this is the kind of thing we are saying we need to deal with this. Yeah. And, and, and when, when uh, topics are discussed in the G8, G7, I don't know, G20, these are the kind of topics that would like to go into this, but the voice for Africa I get is very limited. Now, um, free trade, Christian Aid puts the figure of financial losses from Africa due, due to effects of liberalization at $272 billion loss from Africa. So resources are already moving away from poor countries out of poor countries. So rebranding of Africa and the branding of Kenya will call for enormous capital resources to improve our infrastructure, basic services. Yet we as African nations are operating in a world, a global economy where the economic and monetary systems, we have little control over those. So we have a lot of hard work to do to stem up this. Then we have in balance reporting from the media. We have over concentration on uh, bad stories because that sells and that improves the bottom line. And then there's a lot of ignorance on the good little stories from our country. And social media, again, the Twitters and the Facebooks, uh, much as they are connecting the world, they have also become a charity because you have no control over the content that is put there. More often is exaggerated stories which now lead to a negative image without facts. And you find our tourists being told you can't visit because it's insecure. Yet there's maybe somebody, some journalist picked a fight in the street and the entire country becomes 
insecure. So these are the kind of things we are talking about. And then the leadership, I'd like to say this. So the leadership in Africa is changing. For far too long, most of our leaders forgot that they were in charge of the economy and over-concentrated on politics. So there's a lot of politics going on at the expense of the economy. And we are saying that needs to be balanced or that needs to change. Because politicians world over are interested in being re-elected. So often they can forget about, about developing the country because of that need. So it is time for our leaders, African leaders and politicians, to understand and appreciate that they are in charge of more than just politics. They are in charge of people, they are in charge of the economy. And we have a new crop of leaders in Africa who are doing exactly that. Science and technology, less than optimal adoption of technology in agriculture and industrial production. And this is one way of rebranding Africa. So for me, as I give the topic of branding here, it takes much more than just advertising, public relations, and events. For us, it's much, much bigger. It is the whole strategy of developing Africa, changing the realities of Africa, and then getting to control the kind of media that we get. Peace and security, Africa faces a lot of challenges here, and the stories and daily realities of Africa will not change until we deal with the issues of peace and security. Because I don't want to, uh, to give a story out there, an advert in CNN, and say, uh, everything is rosy. So our governments are taking concerted efforts to deal with issues of peace and security. So what do we need to do, African countries, and what are African countries doing? Good news, Africa, telling the story of Africa as we want it to be told. Media, uh, encouraging African media to write more and more. Not complain, but write more and more of what you want people to hear. We must continue with our regional integration so that we can make the voice of our countries much, much bigger. Differentiation, every nation is unique, so every nation in Africa must move towards showing how it is unique, even as much as we are working on a common image for Africa. Adoption of science and technology, and then changing our daily realities. Where there is poverty, we must create wealth. Where there is disease, we must work on health. Where the street crime exists, that must be dealt with. Where there is dictatorship, then democratization must take place. That way we can change the image of our country. Lessons from the board that I am heading. Our branding program, I said, has two major objectives. One is directed at the Kenyan citizens, and here we are building national pride and patriotism. Loving Kenya because Kenya is a great gift to us. And saying, I am proud to be Kenyan. The next one is international, where we are trying to change perceptions toward our country. So we are dealing with issues of identity and image. And in a nutshell, these are our main programs. The citizen focus on changing the attitudes of our citizens so that they can understand the country is in their hands, their actions, their words, and their thoughts are what build that image and that concept of Kenya. Then we have our public service, the government, delivering services to people and to our visitors and services which show results. And more than that, having one government with one voice, one look. Then we have branding our goods and services. Uh, for the information of this group, out of Kenya comes 38% of the roses sold in the world market. You probably have bought a rose for your girlfriend or for your boyfriend. Chances are that it was from Kenya if you bought it within Europe, because of most of our roses come here. But did you know? You didn't know. So we need to start telling the story of these iconic products, like the roses. Roses spread love, they build friendships, roses come from Kenya. Then leveraging our diaspora, we have over 2.5 million Kenyans in Europe, America, and other parts. They are bringing a lot of money home, but we need to use them as ambassadors. And therefore, we are working with them. I visited Scotland. After this, I'll go to Belgium to just tell them, you are the brand ambassadors for a country. As you work in other countries, project the right image. If somebody is going to be caught in crime, let that not be a Kenyan. If somebody is going to be caught driving badly, let it not be a Kenyan. If somebody is going to be caught on the wrong side of the law, we are telling them, let that person 
not be a Kenyan. Let it be another country. What? <laughs> okay, uh, branding our towns and cities. Yeah, I talked about that so that we can make them uh, hubs for trade. Right now, most of them are very unplanned with no distinctive images. And then we have one on policy intervention so that we can improve the voice of our country in global affairs. Now, what has been our progress? How did we start? We started with putting together what we call the National Brad Master Plan. This one was based on research, and we are asking, what does this concept Kenya mean? And it's a blueprint now. We have put it together, a 300-page book, which tells you what you can, you can't do, how to apply it to complete with an identity and a new icon for Kenya. It also provides parameters and instruction on how Kenya's Vision 2030, our government has developed a vision for our country, which hopes to make Kenya a middle-income country by the year 2030. So it has parameters on how to enforce, reinforce, support, and protect Vision 2030. So for us, branding Kenya is part of our national planning. It is not isolated. So this is the approach we used, and these are the steps we followed. We started with a very deep uh, country diagnostic, just understanding what are our strengths, what are our weakness, what position do we hold within the East Africa region and within Africa. Then we tested this through a broad analysis opportunity model. Those of you who are from marketing know that. And we came up with a broad proposition for our country. So we have that. And since our cabinet has not signed it off yet, I would not like to say the statement here. And then we have a broadening statement for Kenya. Where is exactly do we want to place Kenya in the eyes of the world? And now we are starting to develop both internal and external communication. So you can see the position. This is the last step. That is where PR and advertising comes in. So advertising, PR are the last steps in a branding process. You start with putting together your identity. You start with putting together the kind of image you want even before you start communicating so that you can be sure your brand does not collapse. Now, as we were doing that, what are the lessons that we have learned? One is association. Your geographical position is unique. And because of it, certain associations will come your way. You need to have a way of dealing with that. If your neighbor is experiencing problems, those problems will rub onto you. And this is what is happening to Kenya because of Sudan and Somalia and all the other places. And therefore, what Kenya has done to deal with that, Kenya has decided to be the peace crusader of the region. And therefore, the, the peace agreements for Sudan and Somalia were started, birthed, and babysitted by Kenya. And now they have been signed because we would like to deal with that. Then speed, branding is important. When you start it, you need to move with speed. You need to have a sense of uh, urgency. Budget, I think this is a very expensive program. Branding countries is a very expensive program, and countries must be able to put the, the right budget in it, because once you start, you cannot stop. The next one is integration and alignment. Uh, Jack from Scotland said one voice that all the agencies within a country that are dealing with country image must be able to align themselves to the national brand. If the companies within the country must also have that alignment. Then we have a national image and identity. If you do not have a national psyche or psyche, it becomes difficult to brand. So it is important that a nation has what you could call a generally accepted national psyche so that we can say we the English are like that we the Kenyans are like this and finally what have been our image boosters this has been, been a big lesson for us that before you go into rebranding your country it is, must be, it is very important that the country has a long term vision of where it wants to go um, Kenya has what we call vision 2030 Coupled with that, public sector reforms must take place in land, in legal, in the police, in doing business. Capital markets and financial reforms, we have undertaken this, and this have helped changing the image of Kenya. Then there's the private-public partnership. There's no nation branding that will take place and be effective if you do not have strong private-public partnership. And, of course, we have regional, uh, regional integration, 
Now, enhancing the image of Africa moving forward, these are our own suggestions from the Kenyan perspective. Transformative leadership, we must adopt that Africa. Continued regional integration, that should go on. Investment in the key sectors of health and education, that must go on. A lot of money needs to be put in the area of innovation. Now, as I have been standing here, I've been talking about Kenya. And Kenya, like any other nation in the world, has its challenges. And the African nation also have their challenges. However, we cannot wait until all these challenges are resolved to start rebranding. Because we are human beings, challenges will never stop. Even the best countries in the world have crime. Even the best countries in the world have social challenges. America now, with the American dream, unemployment is at an all-time high. They are suffering the financial crisis. So there's no one country that can talk down to the other and say, we are better than you. It is, it is, countries are made of people, challenges will be there. So the story of Africa as a viable continent to live, work, and invest must find its way into the international consciousness. And a fresh chapter is starting in Africa. Kenya wants to be a key driver of that fresh start for Africa. We want to brand Kenya, but we also want to go along with our neighbors because we think there's going to be synergy there. I want to thank you very much for listening to me. But as I close, this is how we say thank you in Kenya, Asante. Or Asante Sana means thank you very much. Karibu Kenya means you are welcome to Kenya. It is difficult to talk about Kenya. Kenya can only be experienced. Yes. Thank you.